hi everyone uh, myself dr manjunatha c uh, working as an assistant professor in the department of chemistry rv college of engineering bangalore india in this video uh, i would like to discuss about uh, photoconducting polymer uh, by taking uh, polyvinyl carbazole as an example and its preparation and uh, the mechanism of uh, photoconducting uh, nature of this material and also i will uh, mention uh, the important application of uh, uh, this photoconducting uh, uh, what is photoconductivity? Photoconductivity is a phenomena which involves uh, uh, both optical and electrical uh, phenomenon in which the material uh, becomes more electrically conductive uh, when they are exposed to suitable uh, light electromagnetic radiation, either ultraviolet radiation or uh, visible or sometimes uh, uh, infrared and as well as gamma radiations. In the absence of uh, that light, uh, these materials become uh, insulated. They do not uh, conduct electricity. Okay, so these materials absorb light uh, when when there is a suitable band gap. Uh, for example, uh, insulator cannot absorb uh, light. There should be the the band gap should match uh, the energy of uh, uh, the radiation that is uh, exposed. So the material such as insulator. Uh, can absorb uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation and excite the electrons and as a result of that uh, free electrons and volts are uh, created and because of the formation of free electrons and volts that becomes that material becomes electrically conducting to cause the excitation as i told you the light uh, that strikes the semiconductor must have a, a must you know must have enough energy to raise the electrons across the band gap so then only you can get uh, free electrons and uh, uh, free uh, volts, electrons and volts. Uh, so these are the steps uh, uh, involved in during uh, uh, the photoconductivity. Uh, first, the material absorbs radiation. Uh, so whatever it may be, UV visible or gamma or infrared radiation. That depends on the band gap of the material. Then uh, because of that, there is a formation of excitons. Excitons are the pairs of electrons and volts. Okay. So then uh, they are called uh, uh, carrier charge carriers generation of charge carriers next the injection of charge carriers by adding some uh, dopants also you can create the char uh, carriers then carrier transport uh, means uh, that uh, material should uh, carry the uh, electrons and volts from one end to another end electrons moves towards anode and moves to moves towards cathode so that is carrier transport then at the end uh, there is a recombination and trapping so these are the steps involved in photoconductivity let us look at uh, this concept by taking uh, polyvinyl carbozone. It is also called PVK a, as an example. The, let us uh, understand uh, its preparation and the reactions involved. Uh, for the preparation of polyvinyl carbozole, we are going to use uh, vinyl carbozole, a white crystalline material as a reactant. So this is actually carbozole group and this is a vinyl group. So it is also called uh, N-vinyl carbosol because vinyl is attached to nitrogen. So we take a required amount of uh, N-vinyl carbosol. It is also called NVK. Uh, that should be taken in a three-necked uh, round bottom flask. Then a suitable quantity of uh, benzoyl peroxide uh, dissolved in acetonitrile should be added to the round bottom flask containing this uh, NVK and that uh, reaction mixture is heated at 70 degrees centigrade for about four hours so so after that uh, you get uh, the polyvinyl carbozole that is uh, vinyl carbozole is uh, polymerized into polyvinyl carbozole uh, that product is precipitated by adding methanol then it is washed with water and acetone and dried under vacuum so and uh, it has been found that uh, the glass tension temperature of polyvinyl carbozole is about plus 227 degrees centigrade. Okay, so this is the procedure which is actually reported in this journal. Uh, this is the reference for this procedure. Next, let us look at how uh, this material, uh, carbozole materials, conducts electricity uh, when they are exposed to electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so these are the steps involved. Okay, look at this. Uh, so these are the polyvinyl carbosyl material. This is actually, uh, these images are uh, taken from this uh, uh, journal. This is the reference for that. Uh, 
this is a uh, number of polymers pvk polymerized uh, pvk molecules and this is an anode and this is a cathode in in between electron flow from this side to this side means current flow from anode to cathode okay here when this is exposed to uh, light of uh, suitable wavelength the excitation of electrons takes place in the first step this carbosyl group the carbosyl uh, this is the carbosyl group okay this is a carbosyl group pass the electrons to the anode anode where oxidation reaction takes place it accepts electrons electrons uh, of uh, el the electron present on the nitrogen atom nitrogen has a lone to lone pair of electrons one of the electrons are transferred to anode this is called oxidation reaction so this is because of the excitation of electrons uh, when they are exposed to suitable uh, light of suitable wavelength so one the once uh, that carbosyl loses one electron and it forms a, a wall wall is created one wall is a loss of one electron and there is a uh, one wall and one electrons are present this is called exciton or it is also called electron wall pair so then that formed uh, cation that is uh, cation free radical uh, of the pvk which is formed after losing the electron is stabilized by resonance by resonance this chromophore of uh, the next neighboring uh, nearby carbosyl of another polymer undergo oxidation loses its electrons and uh, stabilizes this uh, carbosyl uh, uh, free radical or that is cation radical okay then the transport of carriers can now be generated this uh, takes place this is thermally activated opping process okay hence the electron jumps from uh, this nitrogen to this uh, uh, molecule then again there is a ch formation of another uh, wall and electrons are created another excitons are created okay so this is highly uh, unstable in order to be stabilized and also this anode is pulling the electrons towards uh, because uh, where oxidation reaction taking place anode attracts uh, electrons here okay so this uh, uh, this uh, cation uh, free radical again accepts electron from uh, next nearby uh, pvk molecule and the electron starts moving from uh, jumping from one molecule to another molecule this is called opping process the moving of cation radical can accept electron uh, from a neighboring neutral molecule as i mentioned this is called chromophore we also call it as a chromophore where uh, it is a functional group which uh, can donate electrons the, that has a lone pair of electron that electrons can be excited easily in the presence of light so this happens series of oxidation reduction reactions okay this undergo oxidation and this undergo reduction reactions then it continuously happens electrons flow from one 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 no carbosyl one pvk to another pvk effectively the wall moves uh, towards this uh, cathode and electron moves towards anode as a result uh, this pvk conducts electricity finally the this is the cathode where uh, reduction reaction takes place addition of electrons to this uh, one again this keeps on uh, exciting electron and the, all the four steps continuously happening resulting in the formation of electricity so this happens only in the when the material is exposed to sunlight this is how uh, this pvk conducts uh, electricity upon exposing to a uh, light of suitable wavelength in the absence of uh, light the dark it becomes insulator why carbosols are used as a photoconducting why carbosol functional group as a chromophore is being used for photoconducting polymer it is because carbosol groups are easily forms relatively stable uh, radical cations means excitons can be easily created in case of carbosol groups and they exhibit uh, relatively high charge uh, carrier mobilities uh, they they can allow the charge uh, to flow easily through the material and another important advantage is they can be uh, different uh, substituents or functional groups can be substituted uh, to the carbosyl ring and it is highly thermally and also photochemically stable it not uh, uh, decompose in the presence of uv light and etc 
and it's also a cheap material readily available from coal tar distillation it can be used so these are the information which is obtained from this uh, uh, journal published uh, by this group and uh, this uh, poly uh, sorry pvk as a photoconducting polymer is used in uh, xerox pin uh, xerox uh, that is called xerography electrophotography uh, laser printing 3d printing and also light emitting diodes and uh, photo refractive materials photovoltaic devices wherever the devices where uh, an optical and electrical property are involved so this photoconducting polymers are being used so with this information i am concluding uh, uh, my discussion about photoconducting polymer uh, if you have any questions or clarifications uh, uh, please email me uh, through this uh, uh, using this email id uh, thank you for watching uh, this discussion